We're going to go through the process of creating a purchase order with a prepayment. I'm currently in a demo environment. This is demo data. We're going to use a purchase order. Now, to, to remember that you've got general posting groups that are set up for all of your items. When you go to your posting groups and into setup, clear the filter here we can see as we scroll over that there is sales posting groups and the very far right of sales is sales prepayment account. This is where a sale will go to. If you go to the far right of purchase prepayments, this is where a purchase prepayment will go to. We're gonna be focused on a prepayment going into 2181. So let's go. Um, at this stage, we're gonna do a purchase order. So purchase orders. Um, to start with, I'm going to go to the chart of accounts. I'm going to look at 2181. My mouse is playing up. 2181. And you can see here that it's got a current deposit received in Australian dollars, AUD of $14,300. Okay, so whatever we do today, we'll build on top of that. And then once we post the invoice, it should reduce this again. All right, let's get started with the purchase order. Go new purchase order. And go new. I'm going to select my first vendor in the Kronos demo database, Fabricum. And we're just going to, the rest of the information does not matter, test, scroll down, and I'm gonna look at water. Water bottle. And we are going to look at buying a quantity of 500 of these. This is in US dollars, so that's $5,500, as you can see here. I can see that we've got a prepayment amount, and I'm going to say 100%. And so that's now $5,500 is required to be spent on buying these at $11 each. All right. So the standard warehouse process is from purchase order is to release, from release to a warehouse receipt. The problem is, is as soon as you go to release, it's gonna fail and it's gonna give you an alert which says, you must uh, undeposit prepayment amounts haven't been done yet, so we need to go do that. So just here over on the right, we can see confirm pay prepayment amount on the line, we've done. Before releasing, go to actions, posting, prepayment, post prepayment invoice, so let's go do that. Actions, posting, prepayment, post prepayment invoice and you say yes and it should go and create that prepayment invoice for you. Uh, my posting date also needs to be filled out. So I'm gonna hit today, T for today. Let's go back and do that. Actions, posting, prepayment, post prepayment invoice. Yes. Uh, test already exists for this vendor. It's not allowing me to use a duplicate number, so I'm going to go test uh, um, 10.03.22. Third time lucky. An invoice is now issued. Now, Let's just try releasing now without that payment being issued. And it's released. It's ready for the goods to be received. Because the supplier has credit terms and it doesn't require that they pay cash on delivery, all right, it's allowed us to go and now release this warehouse where you receive those goods, whether or not that payment is actually made. Let's go make that payment just so we can see the, the net impact. Okay, then we're gonna go vendor payments, Just here, we can see that payment. 
I'm going to go process, create payment. I'm going to follow my settings from the last transaction, but I'm going to set my transaction date as today. And I'm not going to go through the EFT process with this because this is a US payment. Um, I'm just going to go straight to set that to cash. And I'm going to take this and post the transaction. Post it. Now, it does normally, if you're doing EFT, you would need to select the recipient's bank account. But I'm just going to go post, post. Yes, payment is done. And it's done. So that invoice is now paid. If we look at right now the uh, balance sheet, we go chart of accounts, we go uh, what is it? It's 2181. You'll notice now it's gone up by the subsequent net change. If I click on that, you'll see my test transaction from this morning of 14,000 and then the one just now in Australian dollars of 7,150. So at this stage, it's sitting as an asset on our balance sheet until we receive and pay for those goods. So that purchase order now, go to purchase orders, we can receive those goods, which is great. So I'm gonna go to that purchase order and go through the next steps. We're gonna go in the purchase order, click actions, warehouse receipt. Alternatively on your Zebra, you can now go to receipts, receive, and you can receive that, which will create the warehouse receipt. Um, excuse me one sec. Uh, actions, create warehouse receipt. Oh, for I didn't select the right warehouse in this transaction, so I'm just going to reopen it. And I'm going to scroll over and set the location code. Make sure you set your warehouse. Scroll down and I'm just going to re-release that now. Okay, so we've got a location. I'm going to go back to my steps. Action, warehouse, receipt. On the receipt, it's got the lines that were purchased. So you can see that we've got 500 purchased. We just need to confirm how many received. Now, if you short fill, technically, you're going to be left to purchase order with 10 units there to be received. If you received 520, it's not going to let you receive over $500. So you'll need to go back and journal that in as additional stock. So it's 500. That's how many we received. I'm just going to go post. And it's always the receive bin for the receive. Uh, we need the shipment number. This was a ship number. Sure, posting, post. All right, let's go. So this purchase order has now been fully received. The stock is now sitting. So we're gonna come back to this purchase order. Let's go have a look at what's happened on the chart of accounts. Okay, so it's still sitting here. Sitting is prepaid. And we've received the stock. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, post the invoice. So let's go purchase orders. I'm gonna go back into this PO. We've checked the invoice, we're happy with it. So the PO is here, good to go. It's $11,000, I'm ready to turn around and post that. So I'll go posting, post. 
receive an invoice, off she goes. Purchase invoice tests already exist. <laughs> because it was the uh, prepaid test. Posting. Yes, I want to see the invoice. And so the invoice is going to sit here like this. You'll see that it's got the amount of $5,500 less, and it's automatically put here what was paid already to the supplier as a prepayment. The payment is zeroed out completely. And now if you go back to your chart of accounts, you'll see the deposit has been reduced and it's now receded into stock. So the last thing we've got to do now is the warehouse put away. We're going to go warehouse put away. And on the zebra, this would just be a put that's sitting there. You'd go into it on the zebra and you'll see that you've got a quantity to put away. When you look at it on the computer, it shows two lines because per item, we're taking 500 from received and we're putting 500 to the suggested bin which is the default, but you can change the bin to any that you feel is applicable. So I can change that here, 500. Alternatively, I can split that on the computer just by going to function split line. And that line here, if I received 400 into this bin, because that's all I could fit in there, I can now go and split that line for the remaining quantity. Once you're done, register the put away, and you're done, the process is completed.